All right, guys, welcome to the shave. Mystic Water is the soap for today. Sweetbriar tobacco. I really like the scent, and this uh, soap is always a very good performer. It is a little bit tricky if you come at it with too much water in the beginning. You don't want to do that. Already, I uncapped it here, and the nice, smooth, sweet scent came up to me. Tobacco with a hint of vanilla. It's really nice. She does have a sample program as well. You can get like three samples at once. You pay a certain price, and, uh, and she gives you a nice, generous sample too. Uh, Mystic Water Soaps. I think it's Mystic Water for Men or something like that is... It's kind of the website. She, uh, it's a portion of her site because she does so many other things, uh, scent wise. Uh, we're going to be using the Nasset today. Two hundred and forty-three is the today's count, since we've got two little dots right there. And we're going to be using a Fat Boy today, Gillette Vintage Razor. And it is an E1, E1, and I'm going to be passing this on to a friend, and uh, I thought I'd shave with it once. He is new to vintage razors, uh, not new to shaving. Matter of fact, he told me some of the soaps that he liked, and they are really some of my favorites, and so that's why I'm using Mystic Water. He's a big fan of Sterling and Fine Accoutrements as well, a couple of my other real uh, big favorites. So um, I am going to... Go ahead and set the aggression. And uh, this, uh, this one has a nice crisp click that's enjoyable. I'm going to set it on six. Now, for uh, I'm using an old blade today, as you can see. And that's why I'm going to start it at six. My, my usual comfort level is I get wonderful, close, smooth shaves at a three. So that's my normal setting. And so um, uh, that's where I would start. Uh, two is uh, pretty, still pretty effective, even smoother, but three is my kind of happy medium. I can go up to four, maybe five, without too much difficulty, but three just sits in that pocket for me that I really enjoy. Uh, so, a couple of things about the vintage, because in most other aspects, it's just like any modern razor. The... Uh, a well-known person who's very good at maintaining and taking these guys apart and all that stuff says that it doesn't matter if you have everything clamped down. It doesn't matter if you adjust the dial when it's clamped down or not. Something in me says I like to re relieve the tension on the doors a little bit to do the adjustments. That's just me. But I wanted to tell you that a, a very credible source says don't sweat it. Adjust it when you want to. Uh, another thing with the vintage is that once we take the blade and put it in, and this is my Nasset that's had so many shaves on it. I've got the three dots. It's kind of the signature. The X is kind of almost gone. It's been there for so long. And do you see, I need to finally look in my videos and see if that's coming out. There's a in one that I scratched for Nasset number one. Uh, right above the A in the stainless. I don't know if it's visible. Now this blade I am putting uh, with the dots down toward the handle. I've just been doing that with this particular one just for fun and for science. Um, and so when you, you just you just put it in there, no problem. When you tighten it down, the vintage Gillette's, you tighten down. There's a quarter turn at the end. Once it seems like it's tight enough, there's a quarter turn at the end that locks it in place. And there are, I have a few vintage Gillettes that, uh, adjustables that don't make that quarter turn. And to me, it's not much of a problem because uh, as long as you get it tight enough to where it doesn't release during the shave, then you're fine. But that's something else to look for. And that when I first started using them years ago, I didn't know it was supposed to do that. And I felt like I was over tightening it. But no, it'll get tight, and then there's a quarter turn extra that you do to lock it down. All right, and everything else is ready to go. We're still set at the six mark. 
and we'll see how this guy, I haven't, I've not actually shaved with this very fat boy yet. All right. I have had this finest badger brush uh, soaking for a few minutes, and this is their super. Uh, they call this one the finest badger super. I'll shake out most of the water. This is a used soap, and I'm going to do a 40 second load. Either it was started at 22, so we'll go to uh, 02 on the next minute. I looked at my notes and I did a 30 second load, and then I had to do another 10 seconds to get five passes of lather. The shave feel is definitely going to be different today than, you know, he's got when when he gets this particular fat boy, uh, he'll he, I'm sure he's not going to put a 242 use blade in it and use it. So he's going to get the kind of the premium shave. I'm going to get the marathon shave. It's kind of turning pasty. Uh, with just a few seconds left, I am going to. Add just a few drops of water, and then one, two, three, four, five. To finish out my last uh, seconds with a little bit more moisture in there. So, so far everything's been normal. Everything's been typical with the Mystic water. Oh, before I start lathering, let me throw a little bit of water on my face. All right, so the key with Mystic Water, I've, uh, I've already actually kind of done the first key. I shook out most of the water from my brush. You don't want to, there is a custom, and it's a great custom of coming at the soap loading with a little bit more water in your brush. Maybe you don't shake out quite as much as I do, and normally that's not a problem. But I've discovered that the formulation of Mystic Water is just such that it doesn't like that. It... Uh, likes to have a uh, just a lightly damp brush and then here's the second key mix it for a little bit without adding any water normally it doesn't take me too long before I start adding a teaspoon of water but I'm gonna make sure that this guy looks right make sure he and see this is just normal this is what normal soaps look like but if you add water too quickly with this soap it gets airy and bubbly and it takes a while to work out and most people don't really have the patience and so it's not really too much of a hassle to do what I'm doing and just kind of prime it like this and just get it to a nice stable point. Yeah, I think we're good. Nice and pasty looking, kind of looks normal. I'm just, and I'm, I'm just going to add about a half a teaspoon and just kind of make sure that it gets started nicely. And then I can, then you're fine. That's all you need to do that's different. Just add water slowly. Why that is the case, I don't know. But I do know that this is an amazing soap base. Very underrated. Slick, slick, slick. Oh, uh, some of her scents are a little bit uh, weak for me, though. I did try a uh, sampling of several of her scents. And so, if you like mild scents, then she's going to be a great place for you to shop for soaps. I had to kind of poke around and try to find the stronger scents. So this one made the grade. What else? What else did I? I should have my list. And now it's doing great. Just looks like an awesome soap. So you can treat it normally from here. And I've got two teaspoons in it total. Now, we can go ahead and add another one. So this brush is the one I assembled and then just recently published a video for it, for the assembly. And I'm sorry, it's kind of long. I don't have any video editing software, and so all I can do is concatenate the videos together. But at least I, I kind of like to try to err on the side of providing too much information. There are definitely some videos out there that skip through important things. At least they're not important to the guy making the video, but to a person who doesn't know very much about 
processes the particular task at hand they might be very important things it's also the reason why i go ahead and record my lather building a lot of guys don't they'll just skip over it and that's okay maybe that doesn't accomplish what they're looking to do but I, I, one of my main focuses on my site is to try to promote and uh, help folks learn how to lather really well all right so we've got four teaspoons in it that might be about all we need to do am i saying that when you load your mystic water uh, and i'm talking to anybody here uh, you need to do 40 seconds and then you need to do four teaspoons of water or whatever i end up using now if you figure out a great method for yourself then go for it i'm just telling you what i do in case you're having trouble and you, and you need a pattern to follow to try to get yourself in the ballpark of a good lather you may not even uh you know, get exactly my same lather, even if, if you use exactly my same times and things like that, because brushes differ, water hardness differs. There's just some variables, but it should be able to get you in the ballpark of a, of a similar lather to what I'm able to use. So this is just plenty of lather. Now look at the texture there. You see those pokey peaks? And the, the surface there, it is smooth in places, but it's, it's holding itself up really well. That is often those peaks and that kind of um, texture that's not all that uh, smooth because of some jaggedness coming out in different places. Often that is a sign, at least for my own preferences with the soap, that I need to keep adding water because I like a wet lather it's still just barely in the creamy state. As wet as I can get it while still being creamy is where I like to try to get my lathers. Sometimes I overshoot and I end up with a non-creamy but wet lather. The good news is that'll still be a high performance lather. It'll be ultra slick, it'll get the job done great. It just won't have a luxurious feel like it would if I would have not put quite as much water in. So now I take it out. Now look at the texture. Look, the, it's just different. It's wetter. There are some peaks, but look, they've kind of curled over. They're not, there's not that jaggedy firmness that there was before. This may be a good stopping point. Just want to get a nice uniform mix. Also, you can kind of uh, notice the traits of your lather by lifting up. You know, pull, I pull it all kind of to the bottom of the bowl here, and then I kind of lift about half of it out. Watch how it disconnects. Look how those peaks fall like that. How they just collapse under their own weight. For me, that's a good thing to look for. You may discover you don't like them that wet, and so you uh, want to keep make sure they keep sticking straight up. You know, whatever your preference is. All right, let's go ahead and use this. I guarantee it's going to be... No, 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 no. I know about mystic water. Let's put in another half. It's going to... I'll probably end up having to add the water on my face if I, if I get it too thick here in the bowl, you know. Which is not too much of a problem, but sometimes it's a little tedious if you, if you miss it by quite a bit. good okay and I feel the nice uh, flex on the brush I feel that it's it's splaying out just a little bit more and I, I mounted this one as high as I could because that's the way I like it I like a medium backbone or slightly less than that I could have had definitely more backbone if I would have mounted it higher throw a little bit of water on my face And here we go. 
These are painting strokes. Speaking to anyone in general. And now I'd like to, after I spread it around for a little bit, I like to, yeah, that's a good feel. Really happy with this brush. So this is a golden nib. Two band, finest badger. They're super grade. I got on their side. I wanted to buy a, a finest badger from them. I had sampled one. I, I have been enjoying their silver tips for quite some time. And I'm, I'm starting to enjoy some two band knots like this kind. If I have them mounted high. Two bands are noted for more backbone than the, the three bands, the silver tips types. And so if they're mounted lower, then I, I don't enjoy them. Well, we are getting some jumpers here. It, this one has nice, nice soft tips. And so the, the medium backbone that's kind of coming at me right now, that's shoving those tips into my face is is enjoyable it is easy enough to splay it's not like pushing my skin typically like that so i it is a place where i really enjoy it you know what this this not reminds me of is the sterling finest badger and so if you want that uh, sterling finest experience which is has been well regarded for quite some time you can get this knot and then you don't have to extract it from a sterling handle. They do have a normal finest badger and maybe I'll get one at some point just to be able to compare the two. But for now, this one makes me uh, really happy. This one was kind of a limited run or something. Uh, they, they told, they said something on their site about quantities. You know, once we sell out, we're done. This was a special batch or something. So I figured let's go ahead and get this one since the regular two band is always going to be available. Well, I can see why this one's very nice. All right, so we've got a great lather. It feels terrific. And this is just typical of Mystic Water. It's just good stuff. Looks like I hit the moisture about right. You can see this stuff flying off. If I'd added more water, it would have been really flying off. And that's not my thing. All right, so we've got this guy set to a, a six. Like I said, normally three is where I really enjoy a smooth shave while still cutting close, but this is a uh, older blade and so I need to step up the aggression. And uh, the angle I find is, is a normal kind of standard angle, it works very well with this, with this razor. As always, I, with any razor, I have a, a very light touch on it. I don't spread out my grip. I'm not getting a lot of tugging from, from this guy here. On this old blade. So he's working with it very well. I just keep a light touch and like right here, I'm just, I'm holding it very, very lightly, just gingerly. I'd rather come back another time and do another pass and then bear down on my skin and possibly cause some irritation. I, I think I have slightly more sensitive skin than a lot of guys, but I don't know how much. I, I don't think it's actual sensitive skin. All the newbies claim they have a coarse beard and sensitive skin. I think most of the time it's because they're not using the gear right or they're keeping their lathers too dry or something like that. Very good. A little partial rinse now. All right. Uh, part of this the reason for this uh, shave and using this razor was also just to check and make sure that this razor didn't have any alignment problems. Make sure the, the gaps and everything were, were proper. You know, it hadn't been dropped in such a way that it would mess, you know, cause it not to shave right. And it is shaving just fine. So I can send it to him with confidence. Tons of lather it looks like i did not have to go for for 40 seconds in the loading 
There we go. I'm going to keep it at a six. That seems to be doing pretty well. Again, this would be a little too aggressive for me if it had a fresh blade in it. But this, this nasset is smoothed out. I like the way you're not getting a whole lot of audio. That's my particular preference. Some guys really like to hear it. But that's because this... Um, I'll show you right quick. The These four bars that stick up through these holes, that's what's supporting the underside of the blade. And they get close enough to the edge to give it some real, real firm support. And that means less vibration. Less vibration means less noise. And my personal guess is that less vibration also means a more consistent, smooth shave. And there we go. Feeling good. And it looks like the, uh, the cut is good as well. Well, partial rinse now, again. You know, I've done a few, I'm, I'm a big bowl lather. I've done a few uh, face lathers with some other soaps. I don't think I've ever tried it with Mystic Water. And so I don't know exactly the right uh, approach, you know, if that's your style. Since you don't want to come at it with too much water, I don't know exactly how that, how that would play out. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this brush. It's soft, it's not splaying too much. I might prefer it to be a little bit easier to splay, but you know, to be honest, I'll bet that will come with age as a few of the bristles on the outside start relaxing a little bit more, you know. So I think it's going to be a great brush. Really happy I tried that knot out from the golden nib. Okay, I think this will probably be the finest final pass. A very nice glide here from the soap. My, uh, my shave feels nice and close. I'm not hearing too much in terms of cutting. Definitely not getting anything like irritation or anything like that. Now, different people shave different ways, of course. I tend to do this kind of buffing here. I do still do it even if, even if I'm not using an older blade, but I especially buff when I'm using an older blade. Helps me monitor my angle and kind of subconsciously I can, or almost without thinking, I'll, I'll adjust the angle on that next pass when I go back over it. If I feel like I've, I've messed with the angle and it's not cutting effectively, I can quickly change it. And that second, you know, buff can usually get the uh, get the right angle. Looking really good, feels good. Yeah, that's a good, nice close cut. Happy with that. Uh, full rinse now. So there are a few tips here that uh, have a little length on them, but it's kind of standard for uh, for this age of a blade. So everywhere else is wonderfully cut. As I was rinsing, it just it did feel a nice luxury to it, and the. Uh, even after I got all the slick soap rinsed off my my face, she's got to have some kind of uh, some skin goodies added in there uh, because my face just uh, felt silky smooth. Wonderful. Very good. Uh, that's not a high priority for me I because I had to use a balm afterwards, that kind of thing. Um, but when it does work in a good soap that's, a, that's not a super expensive one, then I'm, I'm a happy camper as well. Let's see, I think Executive Man is going to be the bomb for today. This is a day shave, which is non-standard for me, and so 
I've got family that I want to smell good for, so I don't choose something weird. I can do that with the soap because that scent is not going to last. But for the balm, and the balm is not as strong as a cologne, and my wife likes uh, the milder type intensities, you know. She doesn't want to get overwhelmed by a cologne, so the balm is just a, a nice, happy medium. Excellent. Excellent. Well, 40 seconds of loading. Well, this brush uh, loaded efficiently because I have got quite a bit of lather left, another three passes. And I guarantee it's going to be a tremendous lather. Yeah, that's, that, that is, it's wet, very luxurious. Here, we'll bring it all to the front and then kind of, yeah, see, look at it droop like that under the weight of the, the water. It's smooth. Yeah, contact slickness is very, very nice. How would I describe that? It's not a watery kind of slickness. It's like a, it's, uh, I've described recently uh, some, like the one I used yesterday, it's kind of a light, a very, very light oil type of slickness. This one, it's a little thicker. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's light, but it's leaning toward a, almost a buttery kind of slickness. And I'm a big fan of that particular, uh, you know, feel. So this is a, uh, for me, perfect hydrated lather. Very wet, but still creamy. So it's a winner for me. And I'll, as soon as my finger gets dry enough, I'll pause you so you don't have to watch me clean up. So that's what I'm going to do, just clean up my gear. How much water did we use this time? I believe five and a half teaspoons. I don't think that this is three and a half. Yeah, five and a half teaspoons for 40 seconds of loading. So that's my particular ratio that I enjoyed today. So we can raise or lower that. Obviously, we don't need to raise it. We don't need more lather. So we can uh, lower that and uh, maybe not use quite as much soap next time. Uh, when lathered, the scent on this is, is kind of on the light side you know, three or four, but it's there when you need it. It's there to experience. So I am glad I have, still have this guy in my den. Executive man uh, is, is matching pretty well with it because the soap is not super strong. So it's not really going to conflict with just about any post-shave product you want. All right. So there we go. I'm going to take the blade out. I put it over on a washcloth and gently kind of tap it. I don't do any wiping or anything like that. And uh, a great thing about using wet lathers like I just did is that you're not going to get soap build up in your in your razor. Pretty cool. So um, I dry my razors afterwards. I'm not saying you need to. I'm just saying that that's what I do. Get in there with the towel. Get underneath the base plate there. And there we go. The great thing about these vintage razors like this one is it's brass in the core and it's just been plated. And so even if you were to strip down uh, all the plating, it would still be a wonderful razor. It'd be beautiful with its brass coloring and it's a lifetime uh, type device, uh, multi lifetime. As we can see, so the, some of these guys have been made in the 50s and they are still kicking very, very well. So uh, this one is a uh, enjoyable fat boy that I um, uh, just uh, the gaps and everything seem to be just fine the adjustment dial sometimes they can get overclocked and maybe it's a little way too aggressive and that's what happens is that some somebody went along and pressed the uh, press this in while you while you they were at their uh, nine setting and turned it further to the next one setting and so now it's a whole nother scale up from one to nine. 
this is in the normal setting uh, range, so we don't have to worry about that. And uh, and we're good, looking good. Approval. All right, just a little bit more gear cleanup. Well, this razor doesn't need it, but if you ever run into a vintage razor that has a little bit of uh, schmutz on it, uh, sometimes you'll see a little bit of green stuff in various places. Uh, it's really amazing how well many of them clean up. And just, uh, I think it's a great way to start out is to uh, throw a little bit of Dawn in some almost boiling water, let it soak for uh, a little while. Um, I don't know exactly how long, uh, uh, maybe half an hour, maybe an hour. I I'm not sure, but that's mentioned a lot online. So feel free to look that up and kind of find out. But that's a, a, a very non-intrusive, non-destructive way to clean your razors. And then after you give it a good scrub with a toothbrush after that, if you still have some stuff that needs to be removed, you can use uh, scrubbing bubbles, uh, bathroom cleaner, and but make sure you get the kind with no bleach and let it sit, not for a long time, just for maybe four minutes or something like that. Uh, let it sit in that for, uh, for that long and then get after it with a toothbrush and scrub away the grime and grunge and you can see how um, you'll be able to see how uh, well preserved many of these razors are underneath a bunch of just surface stuff that can come loose and come clean pretty easily. Now this is not an easy to disassemble razor and so I never have. I have seen a video, videos online, what's his name, Captain somebody? Uh, I can't remember, Captain somebody. And uh, you actually, this is a crimped little thing right there and you have to kind of pop it loose and you can recrimp it, but I imagine that eventually it's going to give out. But, but that's the way to get into the inner workings. Um, and so that's a good, good reason not to grunge it up so you don't have to get in there. Now, uh, another thing that uh, a lot of people uh, talk about is maybe sticking some mineral oil down in the mechanism. Gillette never advised doing that as far as I know. If there's mineral oil down there, if there's some hair that gets down there, my guess is that's going to allow the hair to stay there. And I'm thinking that's not the way you need to go. So I, I have put mineral oil a year or two ago in some of my adjustables and it, cause some of them do, this one doesn't, but some of them squeak. And, uh, uh, and so I, I was trying to help that squeak. Well, it did help to squeak, but. I think it's probably a bad idea to put any kind of lubricant down in there because I don't want anything to get down in there and get clumped up with the oil with, uh, with that. Um, and so that boiling water with Dawn is probably a good way to get any of that oil out of the inner workings as well. Wonderful solid piece. I love the girth of the handle. It's, uh, I've got big hands. Now my own grip on this razor is, uh, is one that's, where my fingers are close together. I'm not trying to spread things out by holding it down here too. Like I said, I want it to, I don't want it to force its way through bumps. I want it to ride over the bumps. And so like a, almost like a shock absorber where it's got movement. And so I hold it very lightly and I hold it in the, near the center of balance usually, but wherever is comfortable, but I hold it very lightly in one area so that it can move and then I can have a very light touch. And I think that's one of the things that helps me give so much life to my blades. All right. Very good. Good little razor. Um, loving the brush. Of course, I love the soap. And that razor did great today. Uh, and the executive man is a nice way to end it all. So this is Sugar Daddy Shaves. I'm sure glad that uh, uh, this, this shave worked out. Glad that the razor is a good one. Be able to pass it on with confidence. And uh, thank you so much for, for watching. I hope there's something here in this video that is going to help you out. All right, now, take care. Have a good day.